So now in this video, we're going to look at balancing capacitors, uh, the basics of them. And uh, the rules that we are going to look at here apply to supercapacitors too, because supercapacitors are just very high value capacitors. Uh, they're more dangerous to work with though. You have to make sure you limit current to a safe level and whatnot. But uh, as far as balancing goes, they have uh, pretty much the uh, same properties. So we have 5 volts at the rail right now. and you can see the uh, circuit that I have down here. We'll look at it a little bit later. But ultimately, we have two capacitors in series, and uh, parallel to them are 100,000 ohm resistors. So they're helping keep them balanced. So there you can see we got about 5 volts there. If I measure the voltage of this uh, capacitor, now we have about half the voltage. There you can see it's about that 2.5 that uh, we indicate there. And again, we have about 2.5 right there. They're equal value, that's the main thing. So now I'm gonna try to pluck both of these resistors at the same time. If I had just pulled one, then we would have quickly had them unbalanced. But there you can see we got about 2.5 there. I bet this one's a little bit lower. And there it is, it's a little bit lower. So they're not balanced right now. Also, while I hold the probes here, you may see the voltage going down right there. That's because I'm actually discharging this capacitor through the meter. There's a lot of resistance in the meter so it's very very slow but it is indeed discharging. And uh, there you can see that one was probably a little bit higher than it was before but uh, now it's the one that is discharging. So that's why we balance them. So again this is a 100 kilo ohm resistor but I'm going to go across that capacitor and there you can see the voltage is rapidly dropping now with that one and it is rapidly rising with that one and worst case scenario since we're dealing with uh, low currents here and everything and low voltages I can short circuit that uh, capacitor right there is short circuit it suddenly went to zero volts and then of course this one it's built up that uh, 5 volt difference there. So whatever current, I do have a current limiting resistor, so it slowed things down a little bit. This didn't instantly charge. If we were directly to the rail, it would have instantly charged. This one would have instantly discharged with the jumper there. But we have some current going through that resistor, and then it bypasses this capacitor going to that one, charging it up finally to the 5 volt uh, rail right there. So now, while we're balancing again, we're going to look at the sheet, by the way, if uh, you start finding this boring, we're going to improve this circuit coming up a little bit. So the rest of the video is not just me talking about what we have right here. We're going to use a couple LEDs to give a better voltage, uh, specific voltage. But in any case, we have uh, the resistors back there to balance it. And I also put these two illustrations on there. So by the way, these are 100,000 ohm resistors right there. This is a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor, 2,200 ohm resistor. So this is going to let a lot more current flow than these ones are. They're just going to do a little bit of current to balance it. Now, if I pull this resistor, of course, there's resistance across the capacitors. They're going to discharge over time. Finally, they're going to get down to uh, zero volts. Uh, they're going to discharge completely. So. That's something to be aware of if you ever decide you just want to balance uh, capacitors in this way. It's probably something you'd want to do where you're charging them often. But in any case, it's all up to whatever your circuit needs. So we just saw worst case scenario, 5 volts, 0 volts. And let's look at, or let's talk about why this might be really bad. So you can see 5 volts, 0 volts. First off, so we still got the 5 volts charged there, uh, whatever. First off, the reason why you usually use capacitors in series, the main reason is that you can't, in this case we got 5 volts like super capacitors. You don't charge them up to 5 volts. Most of them have a, a 2.7 volt limit. And so you put uh, at least two of them in series and then it splits up the voltage and you're within a safe limit there. So that is one of the main reasons. Also, you notice these uh, capacitors are polarized so usually you use it for the voltage when the power supply voltage is more the voltage you want to store is more I should say than what the capacitor can handle now 
you see we got five volts there, zero volts there. Another reason why this is dangerous. You see that's zero volts. So if we start discharging this, we go through a load or something. Well, we have this imbalance. They will both discharge. So that will go five, four, three, two, one, whatever. And actually, if uh, we have this situation, it would go from five volts to uh, 2.1 volts. Whereas this one would go from uh, zero volts to negative 2.5 volts. This will be reverse charge, which is very bad for polarized capacitors. So if you're using smaller value capacitors, you just wanted to get a fraction because uh, this will have half the capacitance. These are 470 microfarad. If I measure it across them, it's going to be, uh, what is it, like uh, uh, 275 or something like that. Uh, it's going to be, no, two, 230, somewhere around 230. It's going to be half the capacitance across there. But you can charge them up to twice the uh, voltage. That, that is the perk. So you might use lower value uh, capacitors that are not polarized because very small value capacitors not polarized just because you don't have a capacitor with half the capacitance. So with those, you don't really have to worry about it as long as you stay within the safe voltage they're rated for. They can be charged either way. But these are polarized. They can only be charged in one direction. So if you have one drift down and then you discharge the two of them, sooner or later, if you discharge enough, one of them is going to go into negative territory. So that would be more positive. That would be more negative, which is bad for polarized capacitors. So now we're going to improve this. And uh, in any case, this is pretty much more for making sure we don't overcharge. As I said before, like super capacitors, they can only handle about 2.7 volts. So this is a simple setup. There's definitely improvements, but the main takeaway is the Capacitors are going to charge easily until they get to the uh, voltage that we set, in this case with an LED. And the LED will also let us know we exceeded a voltage. So the uh, LED, its voltage that it blocks depends on how much current it's going through it. The more current through it, the more voltage it blocks. But uh, in any case, this is just uh, for demonstration. So for the uh, basic principles of using, you could use a Zener diode or something, something that starts letting current flow once you reach a certain voltage. So we're going to take the uh, resistor there and put it one, it's 220 ohm resistor, one spot away from where the capacitors, actually I want to do the LEDs first. And uh, so I'm going to put the cathode, short lead, where the capacitors connect there. And uh, again, with this one. So these should be pretty well balanced. Right now they may drift a little bit if one leaks a little more than the other or whatnot, there's a number of reasons why capacitors don't uh, stay balanced but uh, in any case they may be perfectly balanced up. Now we're gonna go this resistor to that LED you can see that LED light up right away but then it it's not lit up so this one now has a lower voltage than that one because we have not completed wiring this so this limits voltage a lot more so we're below the power supply voltage well we will be when we complete this circuit we're probably at the power supply voltage now probably a little more than three volts across this capacitor right there and then a little less than two across this one so we got the five volts divided up right now because uh, some of the current that is flowing is going through the resistor LED charge that up until we got five volts across them so now I'm going to take this resistor here and complete the uh, circuit I bent the uh, wire and uh, there we go so it's going from and you can see uh, now they're both lit up because first that one flashed really quick because this one had to uh, start discharging a little bit and then they they balanced but now we have that current going through that resistor. It easily goes through that resistor, that LED, that resistor, that LED to ground. And we will see that now we don't have the 5 volts anymore because we got, I got the probes backwards, because we got the uh, resistors and the LEDs. So we could use a lower value resistor there to hold it a little better. But mostly it is that uh, we got current flowing now and so we can't build up as much voltage but there you can see that uh, diode the uh, red LEDs have a forward voltage of about 
1.8 volts right there. So we see that right there. So we can use a semiconductor to limit. That's also going to be probably about the voltage there. So a little bit's building up across the resistor. Now, you see that's what we have right there. So it's kind of like a release valve for voltage. Now we can make this a little better for uh, splitting up the voltage we're using, the 5 volts. So I'm going to yank the red LEDs and we're going to put in blue LEDs. So that one lit up really quick and uh, it'll go down over time. It's blocking more voltage, less currents flowing through it. It's just a brighter LED to begin with. It needs less current to be bright and so it's still going to be bright and it's going to glow for longer. Now they are in series. These block more voltage and uh, so now we got pretty much half of the power supply voltage. So for this setup this is working uh, pretty well right now for charging them up. Of course you discharge them the voltage is going to go down whatever. Uh, for this video it's just mostly about getting them balanced and in this case setting a voltage that they will charge to and hold. And so there's a number of things you can do to uh, protect capacitors or uh, balance them or whatnot. So another thing, this power supply that I have is uh, 5 volts right here, set to 5 volts I should say. So I'm going to turn it off. When I turn it off, hit this button, you'll see that this says off but the unit is on. And if we go to the rail, directly to the rail, I'll move uh, the power supply. So I don't know how many power supplies have this problem, but uh, as I said before, we do not want to reverse charge these capacitors. And there you can see the power supply is outputting about negative 0.6 volts right there. And uh, so when you turn it off, it actually gives a negative voltage. So that's kind of low. Maybe these would be all right. Right now they still have the charge because they have to discharge through, uh, through that capacitor. No, they're already, they already got uh, discharged, so they're not very high value uh, capacitors. So yeah, they're at a negative voltage right now. So I'm going to turn the power supply on. So it would probably be best with the power supply like this. You could use a diode to, to uh, make sure that you don't get a reverse voltage from the power supply, but then it will drop some of the voltage when it is uh, correct. So it's all uh, plus and minuses. But So I'm going to charge that to 5 volts and pluck the uh, capacitors before I turn the power supply voltage off to make sure they are not at a negative voltage.